In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Greetings, God's good people. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Today is Sunday, the 16th of June, 2024. It is the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Church Yebi. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 17, verses 22 to 24. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and will set it out. I will break off from the topmost of its young twigs a tender one, and I myself will plant it upon a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel will I plant it, that it may bring forth boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar and under it will dwell all kinds of beasts. In the shade of its branches, birds of every sort will nest, and all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree and make high the low tree. Dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 92. The response to the psalm is, It is good to give thanks to you, O Lord. The second reading is taken from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 6 to 10. Brethren, we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive good or evil according to what he has done in the body. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to the crowds, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed upon the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should sprout and grow. He knows not how. The earth produces of itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. And he said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord 
Jesus Christ. The theme for today's meditation is let your growth be of a positive impact to those around you. Let your growth be of a positive impact to those around you. Dear good people of God, on this 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time Church Year B, the church makes us understand that all the good things that happen to us, especially in terms of growth, are thanks to God. Whatever kind of growth that we experience, be it moral, physical, intellectual, or even spiritual, it is God who brings growth. But we don't just sit and watch. He needs our own human effort, however small. And when you grow, let your growth create a positive impact to those who come around you. So we get the connection. It is God who brings growth. But he needs our own effort to ensure the growth. And when we grow, let us show that we have grown. Our growth must be of a positive impact to those who come around us. In the first reading, the prophet Ezekiel paints a picture of God and a plant. It is God who plants it, and it is he who ensures its growth. This is what the prophet says. Thus says the Lord, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and will set it out and I myself will plant it upon a high and lofty mountain, that it may bear fruit. And all shall know that I, the Lord, make the green tree dry and make the dry tree flourish. Ezekiel chapter 17, verses 22 to 24. God is in total control and he makes all things happen. In the gospel passage, we find the same message. Saint Mark compares the kingdom of God to seeds scattered upon the ground by someone. This is a parable that Jesus gives. That one, after scattering the seeds, goes to sleep. Night and day, the seeds sprout and grow, and he knows not how. It is God who makes them grow. St. Paul uses the same image when he talks of growth in the spiritual life. He says, I planted, Apollos watered, but it is God who makes it grow. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 to 8. So, beloved, all growth is thanks to God. It is He who makes it happen. Look at us. Look at your children. Who can explain how we grew from a sperm cell to fully grown persons with flesh and bones? We don't even see how we grow, but with every passing day, we increase in height and in size. It is God who ensures all this. Let us go back to the collect or the opening prayer of today. It says, O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace. This is very important. It is God who makes everything happen. And he gives us the grace and we cooperate with the grace. For this reason, the response to the psalm says, It is good to give thanks to you, O Lord. Psalm 92. Planted in the house of the Lord, they just will flourish like a palm tree. They will bear fruit even when they are old, still full of sap, still green. By this is meant, out of the Lord, we cannot achieve any growth or success. Just like a tree planted by the river flourishes and grows healthy and produces green leaves and fruits in all seasons, so is the Christian whose life is planted in God. God is living water that gives life. Planted in Him, He will ensure that you grow and that you bear fruit. We cannot grow nor bear fruit if we are not planted and rooted in God. Jesus says, Abide in me so that you can bear fruit. For cut off from me, you can do nothing. 
John chapter 15, verse 5. The second reading of today tells us, let us make it our aim to please God. Let us be away from the body, but let us be at home with God. And remember that whatever you do, there is going to be judgment. So God needs us to grow. And at the end, he will judge you. He will ask you of all the graces he gave you, what use did you make of them? Did you grow? Ask yourself today, are you planted in Christ? Do you want to grow and remain evergreen? Then be planted in Christ and live in Christ. Now, what is the kingdom of God and why is it compared to plants that grow? What is the link or relationship? First, we all must make the effort to grow. Growth is important and necessary. We should grow. Don't remain on the same spot. Though it is God who brings growth, we need our own little human effort to cooperate with the graces that he gives. When you look at yourself and evaluate yourself, can you say that you have grown? Physically, of course, yes. We have all grown. We are not the same physically as we were 10 years ago. But as your age increases, have you grown maturely in character? Spiritually, are you closer to God? Morally, intellectually, the Christian life is all about growth. Grow and mature in your faith. The things that used to trouble you in the year 2020 should not be the same troubling you now, 2024, four years after. You should grow. Grow in your faith. The way you used to react should not be the same the way you react now, four years after. You should grow. Secondly, we should know that growth is a process. Therefore, we must be patient with the process. It is not instantaneous. From a mustard seed to a great tree, it's a process, a process that comes with prayer. The reason it is said, change does not come in a day. So they need to make the constant effort and never to give up. The second reading says, we are of good courage. So we don't give up. We keep making the effort. Your spiritual life, your moral life, you have to grow gradually, patiently, prayerfully, every day making the effort. You remember the saying that little drops make an ocean. Thirdly, beloved, if truly you have grown, those around you benefit from your growth. In the first reading, the tree produces fruit that serves as food to those that pass around it. In the gospel, the tree provides shelter to many birds that come around it. So, what do others benefit from your growth? We hear people say, I have grown, I have grown. Of what use is that growth? Ask yourself, am I impacting others positively by my growth? As a sign that you have grown intellectually, those who talk with you or those who listen to you learn quite a lot. They say, look, I learn quite a lot when I listen to him or when I listen to her. That is how you impact people positively by your intellectual growth. Morally, when they come around you, oh, they cannot say nonsense. Because you know and they know that you will silence them. Spiritually, you impact them positively when you have grown. You bring them closer to God. We often hear people say, mind how you talk to me, I am not a child. That means they try to remind you they have grown and they demand some respect how they are spoken to. Fair enough. But also remember, as you have grown and want to be spoken to as an adult, do things as well as one who has grown so that you will not be spoken to as a child. Let your actions be commensurate to your growth. Let us pray today that we may all be like the mustard seed, growing patiently yet surely, trusting God in the process who ensures the growth, cooperating with Him, and let our growth be of a positive impact to those who come around us. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.